was lucky enough to have tickets at any rate. For some, the journey has been a longer one than it has for others. But for the two teams today, it's the end of a campaign that began many months ago. But only one will be rewarded for their efforts. It's their 28th meeting in Gaelic football showpiece, and Kerry come into today's game as defending All-Ireland champions. Well, can Dublin do what they did in 2011 and topple the kingdom to claim Sam? Throw-in is at 3.30. You are welcome to Croke Park on this special day in the Football Championship. Hope you enjoy it and wherever you may be. And also, by the way, a big welcome to our studio panel here today, Colin O'Rourke, Joe Brawley and Pat Spillane. And Pat, I was just talking to you a little bit earlier about days like today. And I mean, obviously, they bring back memories of other days past between uh, Dublin and Kerry, which you were so much part of. Yeah, I mean, it, this, you know, this is one of the great days of the, uh, the, the all Ireland Football Championship, one of the great days in the sporting calendar in Ireland. It's a great day for a player, a great day for supporters, clubs. Um, and like I said, I've been privileged, you know, to have been involved in tin finals and it only brings, it's 40 years ago, in 1975, mm -hmm. since I was involved in uh, my first final against Dublin. And, you know, I mean, people don't realise maybe like, the younger generation in the 70s, in the early 70s in Ireland, uh, G GA were struggling, uh, match of the day, cross channel soccer yes. teams, um, and then the dubs changed everything with Kevin Heffernan, and they brought the media on side, and suddenly people were focusing in on Gaelic football. And in '75, Kerry Dublin, and you had the continuation of that rivalry. And I say Kerry Dublin, that those clashes brought uh, they brought colour and they brought glamour and yeah. they brought a great atmosphere, and they brought the cult to the manager of Kefo against Army against the, Mick yeah. Dwyer. And it was a great, you know, it was a great innings. And I mean, I was just looking at you very. <laughs> Just as a very as a very interesting. Now I know Joe. Joe was a, only appeared in one All Ireland final, so he wouldn't be quite uh, off air with with, with All Ireland finals. Uh, that's too modest to say. But anyway, but he Pat Spillane single-handedly rescued the Thank GAA. You. <laughs> no, <laughs> let's call him. But actually, this, can Pat, I just on. give you one statistic? I, I read an interesting article yesterday by Sylvester Hennessy in the Irish Examiner, where he compared the statistics from the 1975 All Ireland final with last year's All Ireland final. And while a lot of mm. there was a lot of similarities uh, in terms of tackling and in terms in terms of scoring and whatever, uh, the two big differences. One, obviously, there was more high fielding in '75. Mm -hmm. But the amazing difference, and I'm not going to in the argument which was better, but the hand passes. The number of hand passes in the 1975 All Ireland final between Kerry and Dublin was 59, and the number of hand passes last year between Kerry and Donegal was 353. Oh, you know, it just shows how much has changed. But look, great day and looking forward to a great match. But I suppose that's the bottom line, isn't it, Colm? I mean, you know. He dropped Mark for the replay yeah. down in Limerick. Mark got the hump, uh, came on as a sub, and was inspired. Uh, the same with Donny. Same with did a, uh, same with I mean, this year with Donny, I mean, it's a big call with Donny. Mm. Mm. I think it's a right call because Paul Guinea brings more to the attack, brings more variety, brings more of a scoring threat. But you know, Eamon lives in Tralee. Yeah. Kieran is the captain from yeah. Tralee. Uh, and now the captain, he goes to a rival club, Cairns O'Reilly. Yeah. So, I mean, but I knew that decision was probably yeah. was okay. The, the other two decisions, uh, Paul Murphy did miss a couple of days training. Marc O'Shea, less so. Uh, and he had no qualms at all about mm. the way The way it operates uh, with, with him. It not it's is it not the smart play to put Starr on the bench? Because what you find with Starr is Pop when he gets a run in the team, he starts to it, go it, through it, the motions, but whenever he's incentivised as he was last year, and the other thing is this: what, that I suppose yeah. that Gavin's thinking, look, I don't want Dublin to take up where they left off against Aidan yeah, O'Shea. Let them face a different you know, game plan for a while and then bring Starr in. A couple of our club mates on, were, were in, um, a few lads from my club, Tipping over were in for the A versus B game now over the last two weeks, and uh, they said, you, first of all, you'd never realise these lads were friends with each other. Mm. It was it was really skin and hair stuff because the bottom line, they know what Fitzmaurice, farm and training dictates who gets on the field. So the farm and training was, uh, Fionn Fitzgerald was playing well, um, Paul Ganey was playing brilliantly, and Aidan O'Mahony is back to farm. But that's what it takes to win because yep. Colin Moore, I remember going to training sessions with me down in that seminary you used to uh, use down there. Yes. And you'd, the be, irony you'd, be, of you'd that. be afraid for your life just watching it. Never mind. <laughs> well, we, we were the closest thing to priests there was around me at that time. <laughs> Missionaries. Anyway, Missionaries. We, we treat each Actually, that's, probably, that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> you were prepared to say, and 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 you were prepared to say <laughs> mass with the poor man who just died after you hit him. Uh, yeah. Ah, but they were nice people <laughs> after the event. But the important <laughs> thing, of course, is if you don't bring a level of steel to yeah. your mm. training, yeah. you're not going to be able to just turn it on in the game. No. So, like, I think um, Fismaris has demonstrated that. Uh, form is important. Every manager says that. Everybody says, oh yeah, the form is...
big game they have since they were beaten by Donegal last year. The same, of course, applies to Kerry, which is only bears out what we have been saying about the elitist form of the championship now. But the Kerry defence will certainly, as you said, Michael, be set up better. And when Mead played Dublin in Leinster finals a hundred years ago, when we used to be able to beat them, and I was fortunate enough to be there, we set out at the beginning, and number one was don't give away a goal. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. It. And we always felt I mean, we, I said, we'd I mean, win. As we've just seen the Kerry team running out onto the pitch pass. I mean, Do what was I, I, I'm sure, I'm sure, and you've done it so many times yourself, but I'm sure it still is, is a moment that you enjoy, and for all Kerry supporters, obviously. One of the greatest occasions and one of the most special moments of any Gaelic football player's career, which was very unusual, what was very surprising, actually, and it was Kieran Donny who led the team out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which was, uh, I would have expected if it was David Moore. Does that mean Eamon Fitzmaurice is pulling tricks? I'm not too sure. I doubt it. But it, it was a nice gesture you know, to, to allow Kieran to lead the team out in Crop Band yes, on All Ireland final day. Mm -hmm. We also had a brief glimpse there, Column uh, of the Gooch. We haven't yes. really talked about a man who, who starred in so many big uh, games here at Grove Park. Absolutely, and I suppose, you know, at the beginning of this year, and we saw the team for the uh, Munster final, and he wasn't on it, and we're saying, has he gone? Yeah. And yet he's back. You know, he, he's probably one of the greatest forwards we have ever yeah. had the pleasure of seeing in Crow Park. And slight of build, and you would think he'd be easily enough pushed around. He's held his whole own against the best of defenders, and again, the man for the crucial scores. How many All Ireland finals has he dominated? So you have him on one side and Brogan on the other. We're fortunate indeed to see such special players. And I suppose, Joe, it's a, it's a, it's a mark of any team. Same with the Kilkenny Hurling team, perhaps, that you can see great players naturally come to the end of their career. But then it seems to move on and somebody else takes up the baton and it goes forward. Well, there are high standards and, you know, there are, you know, players are talked about. I mean, it's part of the folklore and it's just part of what's expected there. And, you know, if you... I mean, I think Fitzmaurice's greatest achievement is, has been the movement of the carry forwards, which is sensational. Their patience before they break into the danger zone, they leave that zone free. They're, they're looking to see where their, their, their colleagues are. They're playing off each other all the time. I mean, they're pacing, they're, the, the accuracy of their passing. And also, I think the, the, the sort of the absolute discipline that they have against Tyrone, for example, they decided, they were clearly instructed, there's no point in going for goals because of Tyrone's two sweepers. And goals. So what we'll do is we'll take our scores in that area outside the two sweepers between the right half forward and right corner forward and left half forward and left forward. And they did that religiously. It's where the four scores that won the game came from. You saw them against Donegal last year. James O'Donoghue was obviously instructed, look, don't go into the attacking zone. Your job is to create space for the others. He does that. He doesn't yeah. even get a shot off from play in the All-Ireland final, but Kerry win. And so I think that there's no tactical confusion with Kerry. They know exactly how they're going to play today. And they have really beautiful, beautiful forwards and they play beautifully. So yeah. it's a huge challenge for the Dubs, I think. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about the Dubs forwards. I mean, Kerry's forwards are probably even better than the Dubs. And what they bring, they bring great variety to their play. They're not one-dimensional now, particularly that Danny has gone. Uh, what's notes about Kerry this year is the huge improvement from their half forward line. Their half forward line has been the best line in the forwards this year. Stephen O'Brien, um, mm. uh, Dunica Walsh, superb. Yes, uh, they had the big get, pad against Tyrone because the inside forwards aren't going to feature much against the defence. But like there's that. two, I mean, so, and what's also unusual about Kerry is, is the way Don, our, uh, Fitzmaurice has them playing. The two highest tacklers uh, against Tyrone were two forwards, Johnny Buckley and, and James, I don't know. And yeah. when I look for hope from a Kerry point of view today, I can see the full forward line today, I think, could be their trump card. Because bear in mind, James, I don't know who has been carrying an injury all mm, year. Mm, carrying mm. an injury into the semi final. He's had four weeks now of unhindered preparation. He's going to be fit. And from what I hear in training, the lads tell me that in training, that the goot is shooting the lights We will find out like today. Think, we will I think there's a big match in the goal. We, 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 we will find out today whether, whether one sweeper is enough. Dublin will play with one sweeper. We'll find out today whether that's enough against the Kingdom. I think it's also important, the weather conditions. Kerry played incredible football in the semi-final yep. with their kick passing in very poor conditions yep. against Tyrone. Yeah, yeah. And the men receiving the ball, the ball was always stuck to them. Yeah. Dublin have generally played in much better weather conditions. I thought that was an exhibition of good foot passing, which was carried out under the most deplorable conditions, yeah. and the handling of the ball was excellent.
Well, as uh, the lads were talking, as you saw yourselves there, the Dublin team now out on the field getting a huge welcome, as usual, from the hill for the Dubs. We were saying earlier on, back in the 70s, they created one of the greatest rivalries in Gaelic football. But it will be the first time in 43 years that Kerry will be in a final without a member of the O'Shea dynasty. Moss is probably laughing at the use of that word. He's beside me, so is Kieran Whelan. Were you aware of that stat until uh, Mark was, well, essentially dropped from the team? Yeah, I wasn't aware, Joanne. I don't know. I, I think these things, the media hype these things more than anything. I don't think Mark will be focused on it. I'd say we're not focused on it. Everything will be zoned in on Kerry winning. So um, these things are, you know, you'll, you'll think about these later on. Um, I think at the moment, I was talking to him during the week, and he's very focused on hopefully coming in today. So he's in good shape and hopefully we'll get another medal today. It's a big, bold decision for Maimon Fitzmaurice, though, isn't it? I mean, I know Mark has been struggling with injury. For the first 15 minutes that he played against Throne, he looked like he was absolutely flying it. And he's a, one of the top man markers in football. He was, Joanne, but th this is it. Like, you I mean, you have Kerry and you have Eamon Fitzmaurice, and for the last couple of years, you have to trust his decisions. Like, he's, he's made tough choices and he, he doesn't mind. Like, he's not here to please anybody, he's here to win. And that's what you have to do. And um, I, everybody supports Fitzmaurice. He hasn't made a bad decision up to now. And um, I think, you know, he picks teams. We, we don't know what's going on. I mean, Kerry have played their last game a month ago. So nobody knows what's happening inside in training. And uh, he picked teams on, he said it before, he picked teams on, on, on farm. And uh, hopefully he picks the right team today. Well, I know, Kieran, when we were down here, the Dubs training are warming up behind us, and you were having a special look out for how Keanu O'Sullivan looked. Yeah, absolutely, Joanne. I think it's it's important from a Dublin perspective. He's been he's been one of their key players all year. He closes down those angles and he sweeps in front of the full back line. So uh, he looks like he's moving fairly well here. I really do think he he can hold up for the game. I hope that he can hold up for the game. It's important that Dublin have a plan B, that someone is there to come in if it doesn't work out, because you know you have to stick to the system, and it's a system that's worked for Dublin. So, John's but, but it's not an easy road to take over. No, it's not. You, 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 need, you need a smart, intelligent footballer. Um, and the talk was Johnny Cooper could move out to number six. But, they, you know, if, if it doesn't work out for Keane in the first 10 minutes, it could be John Small. He's played that role in the, in, in the league earlier on in the year and he knows how to play it. So, But it is it is a big decision. And that's, I just hope that Keane gets through the game because it is important from a Dublin perspective. OK, in a, in a word, are you sticking with Kerry and you're sticking with Dublin? Uh, Kerry by three. Kerry by one or two. Or Dublin by one or two. Oh, he nearly <laughs> said the wrong one. But no, OK, Kieran Whelan sticks with the boys in blue and, of course, uh, Tomas O'Shea with uh, Kerry. Now, let's find out who, how these teams are going to line out today in this 2015 All-Ireland Football Final as we head over to Jer Canning and Martin Carney. Thank you very much indeed, Joanne. Yes, shame about the rain coming down right now. The Kerry team arrived here just after a quarter past one. They announced immediately that they will be playing as selected. About an hour later, the dubs came here. Same question to them. And they said, we are going to play as selected. And they included to the word genuinely. Martin, we now know that Keanu O'Sullivan is going to start. How important is he? Oh, he's vital, to be honest about it, Jared, to the Dublin system. The guy, first of all, provides great leadership. He anchors the defence very well. He's wonderful game intelligence. On top of that, Jared, he knows and understands the sweeper system to perfection. And he's a huge, his fitness actually is a huge boost to Dublin and expect him actually to cover the full back line with, you know, his usual aplomb. OK, well then, let's take a check then on how the two teams are going to line out today. And Dublin start this final with their most experienced player in goal. Stephen Cluxton is now playing in his 15th championship season. Johnny Cooper is chosen to start at right corner back with Rory O'Carroll in the centre and Philly McMahon score of 1-2 against Mayo on the left. Not surprisingly, the main worry at half-back concerned hamstring victim Keanu O'Sullivan. Clearly, Jim Gavin is happy that all is well and the Kilmacott player lines up as per usual. Brian Fenton has been enjoying a fine rookie season. Today he lines up with Dennis Bastic in the middle of the park. Four times All-Star Paul Flynn stays at wing forward alongside the prodigious Dermot Connolly and Kieran Kilkenny, who missed most of last year through injury. And inside them will be Paddy Andrews, man of the match against Mayo in the replay. Dean Rock starting his first final, and Bernard Brogan, who scored 2-9 in his last three matches. And so to the kingdom, for whom Brendan Keeley has won back the goalkeeping spot from Brian Kelly this championship year. In front of him will be Fionn Fitzgerald, who did well at the semi-final, Aidan O'Mahony playing in his ninth final, and Shane Enright, who came on as a sub last year against Donegal. 
It's a first final start for Jonathan Lyne, a second for Peter Crowley, one of last year's All-Stars, while Killian Young played in his first final here in 2007. Kerry's midfield featuring Anthony Marr from Dua and on-field captain David Moran from Kerrin O'Rahilly comes with a glowing recommendation. Stephen O'Brien at wing forward has also been enhancing his reputation this year in a half-forward line which includes man of the match against Tyrone Johnny Buckley and the excellent Donegal Walsh. Good to see Colm Cooper back after last year's injury played here, line up, lining up alongside Dingle's Paul Ganey and James O'Donoghue who got 2-3 against Dublin in the 2013 semi-final. Kerry's manager Eamon Fitzmaurice was here to see Dublin finally get the better of May on this two captivating semi-finals. What will he have learned and how will he be able to use that knowledge? While Dublin's Jim Gavin, another master tactician will be hoping that the extra semi-final match will tip the balance Michael in favor of the 2013 champions oh, there's no doubt about that Ger, but it's all in the melting pot now I can tell you you know uh, Joanne was talking to Kieran Whedon down there about Keanu Sullivan and you guys have been talking up here in the studio as I'm sure so many of the Dublin fans call him work out because this man's role today is going to be fairly critical. Yeah, well, he's uh, Kino Sullivan has had dodgy pins for as long as he's been playing football, and hamstrings have been a constant issue with him. And uh, if you go back 40 years, you can remember Kevin Moore playing in a similar yeah. position for Dublin and yeah. hobbling around here with a damaged hamstring. So, for me, two weeks, it's very unlikely yeah. that you can get over a hamstring injury if it's a bad one. But uh, I suppose all of Dublin will be praying that he has recovered. He is, he is a brilliant defender. I mean, I remember in 2013, Colin Cooper controlled the game in the first half as, a, as one of the great quarterback displays. And in the second half, Sullivan yeah. went on him and really wiped the floor with him. He's a brilliant, brilliant defender. Yeah. And he's the only one who's rehearsed in this position yeah. as the sweeper, and he has rehearsed it all year. Now, yeah. that young fellow, what do you call him? The sub, the Dublin sub. Small has worked there a bit in the league, but it would be a huge ask for him to come into this environment. Yeah, it's, you know, it's all well and good saying you come in performances on training. I this mean, this is a big, yeah. big step up. So Sullivan's critical yeah. in there for Dublin. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, like two weeks is a very short time for a hamstring yes. strain to recover. But I think it's a right decision to start them because at least you start them, you know how much you can get out of him yeah, rather than yes, bringing him on as a sub yes. and discovering yeah. after two minutes he's gone again. But I agree with Joe. He's the vital. He's the cog. He's yeah. the fella. He's the sweeper. He's the fella that holds this new this new look yeah. Dublin defensive system together yeah. and, and uh, Ken O'Sullivan by the way Colin Burke is also one of those guys who I suppose shows the change in Dublin football not just him personally but fellas like uh, Keen O'Sullivan from Kilmacott and Crokes. The changes in Dublin football done for the years because when I came to Dublin first, you wouldn't see too many footballers in the south side. No, uh, football well, wasn't very glamorous on the south side well, of Dublin at that stage. And of course, a big number of fellas also have been through Black Rock, which again would be completely yeah. unusual in well, the they have. What it just shows is that I, the dubs of the 70s have made football a popular sport for every class. Can I just say why Keen O'Sullivan is playing football? Because I played football as underage level with his father, uh, John from Kilgavin, his mother's from Glintflesk. So, do you know, no, the there's a good bit of breeding there. No, the and, and David Finton, the centre fielder, his father's from just up the road as well, in Spa, just outside Kilgavin. The reason, the reason that he's... percent of the people from... I know. Are <laughs> no, the reason that he's playing <laughs> football is the massive work grind that's been put in by volunteers at Kilmacud Croaks Club. They have Never 900 come. active male underage footballers. 900. So that gives you an idea of the work that's going in and that's why you've got players you like Kate O'Sullivan. You not because his guest. granny was from Kerry. Yeah, you weren't a special paid. guest of their sevens out there, Joe, yesterday, were you? <laughs> no, I've, I've never gone back since the day you... I'm not even going to repeat the rest of I'm not even going to mi say the rest of that I, sentence. I'm going to mind you. <laughs> There's Dear McConnelly, by the way, Colin. Another yeah, man that well, you're talking be, about. Dear McConnelly, of course, was a very lucky man to. I was impressed by Kelly's performance against uh, Tyrone in very wet conditions. Mm, yes, Their kick yeah. passing was absolutely magnificent. And, you know, uh, I, I don't know, it's a hard one. Michael, uh, the, the closer it's getting to throwing, the more nervous I'm becoming. Yeah. Last year, I thought Kelly were going to beat Tony Gall. And this year, to be perfectly honest, I'm probably even slightly more confident that Kerry are going to beat Dublin. Dublin have the edge in defence, probably have the edge in the goalie. I would give Kerry a better centre-field partnership. I think Kerry's attack has more variety, carries more 
uh, match winners and I think there's a particularly big game in Gooch and James O'Donnell today and I looked in at the bench and the five subs and you look at yes yes Dublin have game changes and McMinniman and Alan Brogan but I look at Kerry's uh, bench and I look at six odd stars Michael yeah, six yeah, odd yeah. stars yeah. and all of those are capable of being game changers whether it says the two buys in defence whether it says Paul Murphy or Matt Crochet whether it says Tommy Watch at midfield whether it says Davin O'Sullivan or Brian Sheehy in the forwards or even Paul Galvin so Kelly's experience, Kelly's composure, to see them over the line. See them over the line. Does Joe Bronny agree with you? Well, neither of these teams has any distractions. It's not like Mayo, who were dreaming of Sam with 15 minutes to go and just implode it all together. You know, the great Tyrone team of the noughties is the last one that I can think of. They brought absolute commitment to empty in the tank in every final they played in. I mean, they just went. They just went for 70 minutes. And I've noticed at times Dublin being very conservative, being tactically confused. Kerry at times against Toronto, yep. very conservative. Today, whoever empties the tank, I think that Dublin more dynamic, Kerry more precise. I think that they're more tactically certain. A hesitant vote to Kerry. <laughs> Colin O'Rourke with your buddies from across the border dude today. <laughs> Thank well, you, Joe. At, at the last twice Thank that you, Kerry and Dublin played in 2011, 2013, I went for Dublin based on the fact that, I, as Joe said, that they were more dynamic. But I think Kerry at the moment are composed, especially at the time of Pearl. In a way, I think that this game isn't going to start in the middle of the second half when yeah, both sets of subs yeah. arrive on the pitch. I think then you're going to see stronger teams finishing the game for both sides than is starting at right. the moment. But again, I go for a, a hesitant vote for Kerry because I think there's a calmness about them at times of great peril. Game uh, management. That's the thing about Kerry. Game management. All right, that's the thoughts of our panel there. And our pictures show you great atmosphere, great excitement here in Croke Park, as you would expect on a day like today. 40 years ago, Kerry beat Dublin in the All-Ireland Football Final and a certain Pat Spillane scored two points that day. That, of course, started a great rivalry. Hoping to make it three in a row, they tell me, this weekend. So almost set to go, then. Final of the 128th All-Ireland Championship. What a sense of occasion. What noise. And straight away, it's Kermit Connolly coming across here to take an early possession. Thrown it beautifully in as far as Brian Fenton and just outside the D he clips it beautifully and puts it over after 16 seconds. What a start. What a start indeed, Jerry. Clinical, decisive, beautiful crossfield ball that time from Connolly to Fenton. And Fenton in his rookie season leaves his mark immediately within one minute. Fantastic score, great opening for Dublin. Just his fourth point in this year's championship, but one that will certainly settle the nerves, you can be sure. Ball fumble there. Kick forward again by Fenton. In it goes. Bern it was uh, Bernard Brogan trying to pick it up there, unable to do so. And eventually Aidan Amani tidying things up. Stephen O'Brien coming across here. Straight into the chest of Donica Walsh. Goes long here. Out comes Paul Ganey. Gets the nod to start, of course, in place of the team captain Kieran Donaghy. Anthony Marr. Hitting it far too long and far too inaccurately. Missed chance. Yes, and just watch this now, Jerry, the kick out. This is what we have to keep our eye on. Stephen Cluxon already has been frustrated. Very little movement. Well, Kerry adopted a kind of full court press, and that results in Cluxton giving it away and turning it over. Yes, and I think incrementally now you can see the frustration going if this if if, if this becomes a feature. James O'Donoghue, remember last year he came out around the 40, that time he takes too long to make up his mind where he's going to play the ball. And the free kick is against him, taken very quickly. James McCarthy coming up here to mount the next attack for Dublin, already with one score on the board. I think it was intended for Dean Rock, picked up by Paddy Andrews instead, three against him. Good ball across, dangerously, almost handled on the ground, wasn't he? Was handled on the ground indeed by Brandon Brogan, free out. Very sharp referee, and most we said, lovely diagonal ball from Andrews to Brogan. Unfortunately, the wet just slid in the wet and he touched it on the ground. Well, Kerry have played in the wet in the monster final replay in Killarney and here against Tyrone as well in their semi final. Johnny Cooper winning that one, getting a vital touch to it, keeping it away from James O'Donoghue, who then impedes the Dubliner. Free kick. 
Yes, and Cooper's gone one to one on O'Donoghue, and it's interesting already. Donica Walsh and Stephen O'Brien have switched wings. And Stephen O'Walsh, uh, Stephen uh, O'Brien has uh, been given the job of trying to tend back James McCarthy, making those long runs. Look where Kieran Kilkenny has got stolen inside the corner back. Tries to get it on target. And the decision is wide. Not too much in that one. No, from my angle here, I thought it was going over the bar, but there's great movement in the or in the Dublin attack at the moment. And as you said, James McCarthy on two occasions so far has bombed forward. Stephen O'Brien is just uh, trailing in his wake. Brendan Keeley opts to go long, feeling there might be an advantage in the middle of the field, but there isn't this time, and it's a touch back down to Paul Flynn. Beautifully inside here as far as Bastic opens up for him. Oh, Rock was the one who had that one foil and stopped. Really good goal opportunity for Dean Rock. Kerry get it back to De Crowley. Out via Aidan O'Mahony, out as far as Killian Young. And once again, the Kerry defence there looking quite brittle. They're cutting swathes to the Kerry defence at the moment, Jerry, that is for sure. That should have been a goal, but credit Brendan Keeley. Jonathan Lyon now. Again, lobbing this one in. Well, it might have suited somebody like Kieran Donaghy, but uh, not necessarily Paul Ganey. Different approach probably required with Ganey in there. Dublin come quickly from that free kick. Philly McMahon on again to Johnny Cooper. Keeps it moving smartly inside. Going low to take it there was Bernard Brogan. One back by Kerry, by Killian Young. Great pace to the match. Back out as far as Stephen O'Brien. Just one point on the board so far. James O'Donoghue again goes by the first tackle from James McCarthy. Then back came Dermot Connolly. Safely with Stephen O'Brien. Transferred as far as James O'Donoghue from Buckley. That time the fullback Rory O'Carroll just flapped at that one, kept it away from Ganey. That's the important thing from a Dublin point of view. And here's Keanu Sullivan. First time he's managed to get on the ball in this game. Kieran Kilkenny. Johnny Cooper now once again. Nobody putting pressure on him. Able to pick out a colleague, and that colleague is Philly McMahon. Once again, stealing forward as he was doing in the semi final matches, those memorable games against Mayo. Paddy Andrews had such a wonderful first half in particular against Mayo last time out. This time taken down, and this time Fionn Fitzgerald looks with a puzzled expression on his face towards referee David Goldrick. Well, no need for a puzzled expression at all, Jerris. Phase after phase of relentless packing by Dublin. We saw just as in the semi-final replay, Philly McMahon is getting forward repeatedly. Dublin have certainly just made a pack today. We're going to attack, attack, attack. The tactical kind of what I believe at the moment, the cagedness is absent so far. It is just all an attack from both teams. Deed Rock with his first free kick takes it calmly and puts it nicely over the bar. Well, he'd be very, very pleased to get an easy one like that. Denied a goal chance a little while ago. This was it here, as Brendan Keeley got down smartly, resourcefully using his legs, set up by Dennis Bastic. Should have finished, really, but credit the goalkeeper. Excellent stop. Yeah, do you remember the stop he made in the replay of the Munster final as well, coming into half-time during an equally wet evening? Fantastic goalkeeping. One of the best goalkeepers in the country this championship season, Donica Walsh. Kerry needing a score into the third, seventh minute now. Free kick instead. Down to Ganey, touched it beautifully to Buckley, setting a chance up for James O'Donoghue, who sat at his feet and put it beautifully over. That's one they needed just to reassure themselves. Two points to one, they trail, but they're in the match in a scoring sense. Yeah, delightful decision making where the three carry forwards that time. Buckley to Donoghue, got onto his weaker foot, great score. Ball spilled away from uh, Brian Fenton initially there. He was being harassed by David Moran, but. Uh, the referee has seen the ball touched on the ground, so it's got to be a free for Kerry. Great yep. pressure play. And it's the second occasion, Jerry, we've seen from a Dublin kick-out where they're uh, not getting the receiver. Frustration already is beginning to grow on that. It's an area that Dublin are so strong in. Kerry have worked very hard on it, and they're already having success at closing down uh, Clopton's kick-outs. This is where Eamon Fitzmaurice will have watched the matches against uh, Mayo and studied and learned. Paul Ganey, short one, easy one, linking with Johnny Buckley, taking a return, putting it over, and all of a sudden the teams are level, two apiece. 
Oh, so simple. Everybody expecting the long-range kick, but great presence of mind and a delightful score. Another short kick out here. This time, Jack McCaffrey is reading the goalkeeper's intentions. He made that little darting run to get away from his marker, who was Donica Walsh. But then kicked badly out of play. Needlessly given away that time. And Stephen Cluxton, a little unnerved, you have to say. Well, very much so. Again, Kerry are very decisive and pushing up on him. They're applying consistent pressure on the kickouts. And the Kerry force, it must be said, are very decisive and alert in closing down his space. David Moran flicking it through here. Held on to by Paul Ganey, point scorer already, then lost because of the presence there of several Dublin defenders. But Buckley wins it back. Cooper's involved. David Moran now, a little solo on the 45 metre line. Good ball outside to Jonathan Lyne. In space unmarked Buckley taking it down turns beautifully doesn't uh, finish however remember he got three points in the opening 10-15 minutes of the semi-final against Tyrone that's one he should have nailed I feel two apiece still eight and a half minutes gone yeah he looked quite nonchalant actually as he went on to his left foot that time I thought he had it nailed but no very very bad way there'll be just a good point about that again let's look to see how Cluxton does here with his kickouts Goes long, forced to do so. Flynn came, touched it back as far as James McCarthy, and they're able to hold on to it. Then Keanu Sullivan, rather nonchalantly kicking that ball away. Dean Rock. Connolly got there ahead of Brogan. Peter Crowley goes back secure, puts his head down, gets past Andrews. Needs the goalkeeper, Brendan Keeley. Anthony Marr now. Wet conditions. Big long one over the head of Stephen O'Brien. He's got Ganey coming out as well to help him here. Still Stephen O'Brien. Back towards the aforementioned Dingle man. And he hit it to the wrong side of the post. But it got a touch and it's gone for a 45. 45 indeed, Ger, but there's wonderful uh, use of the foot pass by Kerry. Up into the corner, stretching the Kerry rear guard. So far, only on one occasion have we seen Keno Sullivan involved in the game, trying to cover space, but they're actually bypassing it. Keno O'Neill there alongside Eamon Fitzmaurice. Unruffled as per usual, Fitzmaurice here, very single-minded in his determination to get a two in a row, just as they did, of course, back in... Uh, 2006 and 2007 so they have this first 45 and James O'Donoghue is the one who's going to take it no Brian Sheehan, he's among the subs more difficult kick I would think because of the rainy conditions, no breeze about and he's put it poorly out to the uh, right hand side and uh, in spite of the best efforts of Colin Cooper couldn't keep it in play yes but he doesn't put the full weight of his body through that we've seen it already this year he more or less stabbed at that 45 it was never going to reach its intended target Cluxton again goes long but it's intercepted here by Anthony Marr they've anticipated all the possibilities that Cluxton might use good ball dangerous ball down here runs on beyond uh, Paul Gini that time and out comes Rory O'Carroll. As far as his centre-back, Keanu Sullivan, the 27-year-old, down to Dean Rock, couldn't hold it, had a chance to catch it, he was under pressure, should have held at that time, I think. Then the foul committed, and Kerry will have the free kick. Yeah, but Dean Rock is a lot more active, a lot more alive to situations today than he was in the semi-final. Bit unlucky that time, but I must say the weather is kind of exacerbating the difficulty of controlling the ball. You just see it there with James O'Donoghue. O'Brien here, again, the referee didn't like the nature of the challenges, so it's going to be another free kick. Dean Rock starting his first All-Ireland final, and this is 18th championship match. Anthony Marr. Killian Young now, such a clever player, playing today in his sixth All-Ireland final. Marr, cross here as far as Peter Crowley. As a support player, it's Aidan O'Mahony. He scored in All-Ireland Finals in the past. He'd love to score here, but that was 10, 15 metres wide of the target. An interesting co thing going on off the ball there. I know that David Coltrick is going over to have a word with Philly McMahon. He was fouling uh, Rock that time. They are rather Colin Cooper that time. The referee didn't pick it up. Here's Jack McCaffrey. Tasty player. Penetrative run. Back once again from Kilkenny. Back here to Paul Flynn. Not a good ball, straight to Aidan O'Mahony. Oh, hefty challenge there on Ma, which stood it well. It's the Dubliner, Paddy Andrews, I think, who came off second best. 
Peter Crowley struggling to get away from a couple of challenges. The last one was a, an illegal one. Meanwhile, out of the uh, picture, I can tell you that Paddy Andrews has certainly come off second best, and the doctor is in there to attend to him. Yeah, there was a big head collision that time. Just watch it here coming up, Chair Anthony Morris coming into it. Ooh. That is a hard collision, and I think uh, Paddy Andrews actually will need quite a bit of attention after that. Because um, our friend Anthony Marwing style, as I said, OK, Keno Sullivan definitely is playing a sweeper role. Philly McMahon is going man-to-man -man and Cooper, but other than that, it's very, very open. Moran's free kick caught beautifully by Stephen O'Brien. Back here once again to Mar. Difficult one there for Donica Walsh to take, fumbled, in went Bastic, two men surrounding him, now three, and the referee allows play to continue. But that's a, a poor ball kicked away straight to David Moran. A little bit of work here to do for James O'Donoghue. Again, that football down there is so greasy, so difficult to take under control and contain. All the way up here, but only as far as Killian Young. Young looks around here, sees a, a player in space. That's Maher. He's got another player to his right-hand side. That's Line. Across as far as Crowley. Darting back inside. Connolly going after him. Seen nothing of Connolly so far. We have now... Back out it comes towards Donica Walsh, having a look at it, and looked away in disgust immediately, and that's five wides already by Kerry, it's quite a lot. Yeah, and bad decision-making that time by Donica Walsh, actually from a very difficult angle, somewhat off-balance, in difficult conditions, that was very much, uh, you know, a Hail Mary kick. Well, the last score was in the eighth minute of this match. Two apiece still. Brian Fenton, who started the scoring, took it easily around Marr that time, wrong-footed him completely. But then Kerry's half-back line functioning well. Killian Young, the most experienced one in that half-back line, out to Ganey. One for James O'Donoghue to come to, but a committed Johnny Cooper got there first. Got a vital intervention that time, an interception. And Dublin can counter here. And it's the pacey Jack McCaffrey again. All the way down as far as Kieran Kilkenny. Having a great year. Against him, Jonathan Lyon. Back in as far as the support pair, McCaffrey. Back to Kilkenny once again. Dublin trying to get the next score now. Steele back in front again. Maybe Bernard Brogan here. Setting somebody up, Dean Rock, putting his boot through it. But to the left of the post, and a missed opportunity. Yes, and there again, Joe, you have the situation of Jack McCaffrey getting forward, making that extra man, that little domino effect of bringing extra man into the attack, but that should have been finished. That was a good, good opportunity from Dublin Spurn. Keeley just chipping it up into the air. One for Marr to try and get to. He does so, knocks it down to Jonathan Line before a couple of Dublin players could converge on him and foul. Good use of possession here by Kerry. Donica Walsh across here to Cooper, looking to get more involved. Good ball to James O'Donoghue. Trying to steal a march here on Johnny Cooper. Puts his toe behind it and puts it over the bar as well. Really good score. Well, when that little wizard Cooper gets the ball, my God, can he direct those passes with laser-like efficiency, or accuracy, rather. That was a wonderful score from Donoghue. And Kerry lead for the first time in this match. Kicked it to the middle here, broken down as far as Paul Flynn. This is a bit more like the way in which Dublin used kick out in the past. They usually targeted Paul Flynn, and Paul Flynn is uh, such a good wing forward, so good in the air. Having to do so this time because many of the shorter options aren't always available to Stephen Cluxton. Another free kick, James McCarthy taking this one. Fumbled by Connolly, lost his way, then put his boot in there to try and deny Peter Crowley. One back by Kieran Kilkenny. Having a look around to see where there is a loose man. It's Keen O'Sullivan. In as far as McCarthy. Two carry players went to the one man that time and left McCarthy free. Lost by Bernard Brogan again in the slippery conditions. Ball handling is certainly a problem. That was Cooper, dispossessed by Bernard Brogan. Made up a bit of a lot of ground that time, Brogan. And he's got it back to McCaffrey. McCaffrey goes forward again, goes into the challenge. He's fouled there by Aidan O'Mahony, and it's going to be a free in, and the referee is noting the offence. Yes. But full credit to Bernard Brogan that time. He had lost it initially, then went back, regained possession, sent it in as far as McCaffrey, and then the foul was committed there, just about 30 metres out. Yeah, Bernard Brogan that time executed a wonderful turnover. Again, OK, the foul 
you know, I think there was three or four Gary men made a sandwich, and this now is a good a, opportunity. This could be a two-point game now, just as it was at the beginning of this match when they got the opening two scores, and now Dean Rock. Sorry, correction, it's a three at three, I should say. Dean Rock with his, his second free. Jim Gavin here looking on, what a great job he's done over the last number of years. Favourites in the minds of many, many people at the very start of the year coming into this contest. Yeah, Paul Flynn didn't contest the ball that time, he made for Killian Young, actually Killian Young is doing a one-on-one -on -one on Flynn, and notice where Flynn is going, Jared, back into his own defence. That ball is kicked away poorly, Jack McCaffrey able to pick it up. Brian Fenton. Three apiece. Dennis Bastig just takes his time with this pass, trying to place it into the path there of Paddy Andrews against Fionn Fitzgerald. He's doing well there. Chance to regroup. Back as far as Paul Flynn. Taking over is Kieran Kilkenny. Again, the run by Philly McMahon here in a dangerous position, and then lost. Just couldn't hold on to it, Kieran Kilkenny. Almost in for a possible score. And it comes out instead to Donica Walsh for Kerry. Tight marking, McCarthy there in on top of Stephen O'Brien. Nothing given away easily in this match. Dean Rock on the ground. That's Stephen O'Brien there. Yeah, he might have a word with Stephen O'Brien this time again. The conditions are causing a lot of these incidents. And the man I'm quite fascinated by at the moment is Philly McMahon. By attacking, he's taking Colin Cooper away from the area where he's most comfortable in front of the post. The last double in attack, if you saw it, Ger, who is the sweeper? It was Colin Cooper turning over the ball and initiating another attack. This is interesting. They brought Stephen Cluxton up to take this one. Hasn't scored in this year's championship. He's taken a fair few free kicks, but hasn't... Uh, hit them over the bar just yet well now maybe in the All-Ireland final that trend will change has scored 46 points in the past today playing in his 78th championship match teams three apiece from outside the 45 metre line can he land it? they go for the white flag he most definitely can my god he was so calm and measured with that kick wonderful score from his wrong side so to speak and that's the lead for Dublin. He may have looked at, under a little bit of pressure earlier on with his kickouts, but it's uh, begun to turn around now, playing with a fair deal of conviction and composure. In the middle of the park here, that's a, a foul on David Moore. Slips it out quickly as far as Killian Young. Tries to get Kerry back on terms now with his next attack. Into Danica Walsh, slipping on the ground here. Immediately surrounded, back in beautifully as far as Paul Gainey. Gainey stopped there, lovely touch by Johnny Cooper to dispossess him. Flynn was back there helping, and the referee saw the pressure on Flynn and decided it was a, a foul and a free kick awarded. Cluxton back out the other side. Carried on by Brian Fenton here. Keanu Sullivan just spinning around, change of direction. Again, it is Philly McMahon, the player that Mark is talking about there, doing well, dominating his tussle with Colin Cooper so far. Paddy Andrews with a battle to win there. In the end, it is carried out by Fionn Fitzgerald. Line ball, which David Connolly is going to take. Dumps ahead by a point. Booted ambitiously right across to this Hogan's downside to James McCarthy. Oof. Unable to step inside the cover of Johnny Buckley. Chance has got a begging. Anthony Marr has it back. And Kerry can mount the next attack. Donica Walsh. Here's Young. Again, keeping it away there from Dean Rock. Shane Enright. And changing the direction. Aidan O'Mahony. Comfortable, able to carry it out there. Used to play in the half back line, of course. Fionn Fitzgerald. Switch back in here as far as Anthony Marr once again. Goes long. Good run by Stephen O'Brien in between two Dublin defenders. Good anticipation. Good teamwork. David Moore and now to try and complete it, but he can't put it over the bar. 
Oh, that's wonderful movement, it must be said by Stephen O'Brien that time. David Moore again from distance, putting it wide. And But the man here is on the ball at the moment, Keno Sullivan doing very, very good work as a sweeper. And he's got that uh, short kick out. James McCarthy now. McCaffrey. Once again, the Kilmacott Crokes player. Bastic. Leisurely build up by Dublin. Kerry retreating, more or less inside the Kerry half. Kilkenny. Connolly now trying to dictate the tempo of this game, trying to impose himself a little bit more as well. Three are after him. He's lost the ball and diving in to try and get that one and injured in the process there. One of the Kerry players, it's uh, Colin Cooper, in fact, went in. Yeah, that's quite reckless by Dermot Connolly that time, right into Cooper. OK, you can see conditions actually maybe made that worse looking than it was. But as I said earlier, Ger, Colin Cooper is back in a defensive situation. And as you alluded to a couple of moments ago, there was no carry uh, attacker or no carry player in the Dublin half of the field when Dublin went forward that time.